people are actually more selfish they're just not aware about what's going on around in their surroundings they just don't listen they don't see people who are standing right in front of their eyes these are some of the common comments and complaints that we hear more nowadays so does that have any value is there any truth to it or is it just uh, narrow minded people who have no other job than just to complain and complain about people let's look into that hi i am dr story walker i thought this is a interesting topic to discuss we'll all benefit from it and i'm not just going to talk philosophy i want to relate it with the scientific background and see whether it holds any kind of truth to it so you and i are basically different people right so what's important to me might not be important to you agreed so we all make a conscious decision of what is important to us what is not important to us so this decision the brain process the brain actually has its own set of rules so it has to process so many information you know every millisecond it receives uh, information like you know what we feel what we see in front of our eyes what we listen to our smell so many information it has to process so if it process everything it will go crazy with our conscious input it is going to filter out 99% of the information that it receives and it's going to process 1% of this information so at the most basic level brain actually functions by nerves getting excited so nerves get excited and then chemicals are released in the brain and it has to transmit signals from one nerve to the other down the line so this happens in a matter of milliseconds if only you know a nerve excitation is sufficient for us to commit something or some person to our memory that would be a lot easier and would be remembering so much amount of information but that is not how it works the most basic structural unit of the brain when a nerve gets excited it has to pass on information to the nerve that is down the line so this junction nerve junction where a chemical gets released which is going to activate nerves and transmit information this junction is called as a synapse okay so every millisecond activation is going to happen and it's going to transmit it has to get repeatedly excited a considerable number of times so that you know we can commit something to our memory but again there is a catch you know further and further activation what normally occurs is it leads to weaker and weaker transmission this affects the amount of activation that's happening and only when activation occurs for 5 to 10 minutes the brain realizes okay probably this is something that is worth committing to our memory 5 to 10 minutes of activation that is a whole lot of milliseconds of activation that is required to reach that 5 to 10 minutes right but one interesting thing is that you know a noxious stimuli of that is a painful or a stressful stimuli what is seen is instead of getting weaker and weaker it leads to stronger and stronger signal transmission we can relate to this right you know a uh, traumatic event when we face it's so difficult to forget we try and try to forget but it just doesn't easily happen so that probably there's some truth to it we can also relate to a classroom sitting through a lecture it's not really so easy unless you know we put in a considerable amount of effort likewise you know adjusting to a new environment a living situation or a work environment and also adjusting to new people whether it's a friendship or a relationship it has that initial learning curve that we should be willing to cross that initial rough patch so this stressful stimuli if we are willing to go through it what happens is you know the there is repeated activation and then in with 5 to 10 minutes of a nerve activation that is only to commit to the memory it takes at least 1 hour of activation for us to commit to long term memory so only when we are willing to take up this considerable amount of stress initially then what happens is slowly our brain also follows suit it is going to realize that this is something that is important to us and we are going to become more and more aware of our surroundings we notice people that we did not notice before and also we also start to become aware of sounds we eliminated as background noise suddenly start to make sense so these kind of changes start to occur but this is not just me telling there is actual structural changes happening in your brain when you are willing to undergo this stress so what happens is there is more number of chemicals that are being formed at this synaptic level okay and there is more chemicals that can be released 
more nerve connections that are being formed. So there is actual structural changes that are happening if we are willing to undergo this stress. This change happens even sooner. So it is kind of like a quicker way to reach our goal, right? So we are probably learning a skill in a classroom or probably trying to adjust to some person or adjust to a situation. So we want to do it quicker. The other way around, it can happen, but it will take a longer time. So when it is going to take a longer time, that's when we, you know, we start to get fed up and we say, okay, probably this is not working for me. And we have a breakup or we just think that, okay, this information is not important when it is actually so. And for certain things, you know, we just cannot agree upon those kind of things. Probably, you know, we should, we can avoid. But once we have chosen a path and then we are not willing to take up the stress, it is actually holding you back and not taking you forward. So probably that is why people who we consider little more experienced, they have gone through a considerable amount of stress. So they are willing to endure this initial learning curve or initial adjustment period. So probably that's why they have more value than people who have a little lesser experience. If you see the new age thinking, what do we say? We say that a oh, classroom should be absolutely stress-free. It should be really comfortable. We cannot expect anyone to adjust. That is so wrong. That is actually interfering with a person's freedom. Right? So these kind of things actually doesn't hold good. It is going to bring you down. It is going to slow you down from reaching your goal. So people who say this, they are actually probably, they don't know what they are talking about. Or probably they are just looking for popularity because, you know, it sounds appealing to all of us. And probably I think we should not be taking this too seriously. We should rather be willing to take up the stress, go through this rough patch, sooner let the structural changes happen in our brain so that there is something beneficial that is coming out of it. Sooner we can move on with our skill. We can probably put it to good use. So within reasonable limits, consider erring on the side of stress so that we can become a better person sooner rather than later. You'll become a person from one with lesser experience to being more experienced and have more value. Probably the saying, no pain, no gain, holds some value. Am I right? So, hope this information was useful to you. I'll come up with more such information and discussions. Thank you. See you in the next one.